So welcome everybody, thank you guys for um, attending our session on Google Hangouts and Google Plus. Um, really the point of this session is hopefully to share some of our experience as a company that uses Google Plus and uses Google Hangouts and hopefully to equip you all with some ideas that you can take back to your campuses and use and share and hopefully be able to use Google Plus and Hangouts as we have as a real tool to reach international students. So that's really what we're going to talk about today. So my name is Don Sears, and I'm joined by Jenny Frankel, uh, who is my MC today. She's going to be driving the presentation for us. Um, and we both work for a company called Invisage International out of Neptune Beach, Florida. And those of you that were here a little while ago saw the picture of the beach that we showed to make everybody jealous. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we work in Neptune Beach, Florida. And Invisage International is an online marketing or a digital marketing company. Um, we do things with, you know, we use a lot of Facebook, we do a lot of Twitter, obviously with Google Plus, we do some email marketing. We do a ton of content generation, whether that's writing content or whether it's uh, video type of content or whether it's a Google Hangout. And our job as a company is really to create engaging content that is going to make us really the true resource for international students. So as an example, we own a website called internationalstudent.com, which is really one of the leading resources, free resources for international students to learn about studying in the US. So we put a lot of content out there, content such as what is it like to study in the US? What's it like to study in Arizona? What's it like to study math in Arizona? What kind of visa do I need to study on 43? <coughs> What kind of insurance do I need? I need help writing my essay. Lots of different information that we provide. So we have to have really engaging content. And so we do that in a lot of different formats. Like I said, we do it through written content, through articles, through blogs. Uh, we do it through video content um, and those types of things. So that's kind of what we do as a company, whether it's for our insurance business or whether it's for our school marketing business or you know getting businesses in front of international students. That's what we do as in online marketing, kind of if you dissect us, a content marketing company. So we, as a company, are always looking for new and engaging ways that we can not only create content, but we can distribute that content so students find it, so they can read it, so they can learn more about whatever it is that they're looking to find out about studying in the US. So that's a little bit about Invisage International. Um, I am Don Sears. I'm the director of sales for our online marketing division, specifically the school focused business. So we help schools that want to attract more international students, diversify their campus, uh, whatever it might be. We've got marketing programs available for schools um, across the country. I mean, if you're not on internationalstudent.com, it's free for schools. Obviously, we have upgraded packages, but it's free for you guys to be on there um, as well. So I'm joined by Jenny, as I mentioned. Um, Jenny has a couple, she wears a couple of different hats. Um, she wears an insurance hat, so international student insurance, and you can visit her um, at the insurance booth um, in the exhibit area. And she also manages our financial aid and loan division of the company. So just as I use a lot of the tools, the Facebook and the Twitter and the Google Plus to reach international students for the purpose of marketing schools, she does the same thing, but maybe it's to educate a student on the financial um, aid that might be available or the scholarships that could be available for students to study in the US. So we both have a lot of experience with Google Plus with a lot of the online marketing techniques that we're going to talk about um, today. So does that make some sense? So I want to just kind of get a sense of who in here has a personal Google Plus page. You do? Are you active on it? Um, I'm sort of. <laughs> are you more active on Google Plus or are you more active on Facebook? More active on Facebook. More active on Facebook, okay. And what do you use Google Plus for primarily? Um, to really connect with my kids and do a Google Hangout with them. When you say kids, you're not meeting your kids, you're meeting your students. No, I mean my kids. Well, because it's my personal one. Okay. So when I'm away from, you know, when I'm at work, they all connect with me through the phone. Oh, perfect. Yeah, they love it. Okay. <laughs> and do you have one for your school? Um, we actually um, created some. We okay. just have a 
we did it within the, the department, um, but we haven't explored further on. Okay. We like Google Hangouts because you can use the documents on it, but right. we're just implementing it. More interest generating students. Sure. Now, are you using the, um, the on air hangouts or using the regular hangouts? Just regular. regular. So, has anybody else been a part of the Google Hangout? Perfect. So, one person. Actually, you can all answer yes to that question because you're all part of the Google Hangout right now. This is actually being broadcast to an audience that we marketed to in this region, kind of through our newsletter. So, here is our, our hangout, and we have people that are tuned in across the country, across the globe, uh, throughout this region that are actually watching this presentation right now. So there's some really cool things about it, and one of the things that we wanted to kind of try out is we are hopefully, and you all agree at the end when you fill out your evaluations, your, um, we're providing engaging content that people are going to use, people are going to share, people are going to engage with, and so that's really kind of the point of what, why we're doing this and why we're doing it live. This hangout is going to live on beyond when we all go to lunch at noon, right? It's going to go automatically through Google and through the integration. It's going to go right on YouTube. So it can be searched through Google search. It will be able to be found when people are searching on YouTube, which is the number two search engine um, that's out there. And so people will be able to find it. And then we as a company, we're going to put it on our Invisage International homepage, or not on the homepage, but in the appropriate sections. And we might build it throughout some content areas and blogs and things along those lines. So again, our hope is to create some engaging content that people will use and share um, and really kind of take it to the next level. And then in a week when I get an email from the region saying, hey, can you share your PowerPoint, your presentation? I'm going to say, here's your YouTube link. And then it's shared um, automatically um, with the region. So, who else is using Google Plus? Anybody else using Google Plus? Have a personal account or a business account? A business, business account. And what are you doing with it? Um, um, it's an India actually, sorry. My staff in India actually mine. So, we're creating different emails for students that are interested in different areas of study. Mm -hmm. so we're trying to create communities. Relatively new. Perfect. Well, cool. So, some people have some experience with it, others don't. My goal is to hopefully arm you with the tools to be able to walk out of here and use Google Plus, use the Hangouts, um, bring it back to your school and really make it a valuable tool. It's not really meant to replace your Facebook or your Twitter, but it's a complement to it. It's another channel, another marketing kind of distribution um, channel for you. Um, so I'd love to keep this just casual. Um, we're gonna cover a lot, so if you guys have questions, um, for folks that are live here in the audience, do it the old-fashioned way and raise your hand. And for those that are actually on the Hangout, if you have questions in the upper right-hand corner um, of the Hangout, you'll see a Q&A section, and you can click that, and it'll open up a dialog box, and you can type your questions, and we'll get through those. Jenny will feed those to me, and we'll, we'll address those questions as well. So what are we going to cover today? Um, we talked about the live Hangout. Um, we're also going to talk about what Google Plus is. It's got a little mystery behind it because it's not really what it started out to be at the very beginning. Um, we're going to talk about why we use it and the advantages that we see to using it. Um, we'll talk a lot about the Hangouts. I think that's kind of the, the coolest part of this and really how the Hangouts and Google Plus and everything kind of integrate in with a lot of the different Google tools um, as well. Um, we'll talk about Mississippi State, who we did a case study with, and we uh, actually did a live Google Hangout to help them reach and attract new international students, uh, we'll kind of get them um, in their pipeline. And then we'll talk about some of the lessons that we've learned kind of along the way, some of the things like, don't forget to plug the microphone in, just, you know, some common sense things. Oh, might be common sorry. Sense. <laughs> <laughs> And then, you know, we'll have more of a, a larger Q&A session afterwards. But again, please ask questions as we get through it. And Jenny, if you see it, um, let me know. So anybody have questions now before I kind of roll through? Perfect. So let's talk about what, what Google Plus is um, and kind of an, an explanation of it. So to do that, you kind of have to take a historical look at it. It's not a large history. It's kind of a short history. Google Plus, Google came along, they're the big giant in the room. They wanted to go head to head with Zuckerberg. 
and they said, we're going to create a social media platform that's going to go head to head with Facebook, right? We want people to put cute pictures of puppies on Google, not on Facebook, or on Facebook and on Google. So they, they did that, and it worked well. They had an advantage because they had a ton of Gmail users who use the Gmail. I know I do. Um, so they, they had all those users they could push it out to it. They started almost creating um, sort of accounts just automatically for folks. Like, I don't know how I got a Google Plus account, but I got one, and now I use it, right? But how did I get it? I didn't push a button or anything. So they started that way. So then all of a sudden they had 540 million as of last year Google Plus users. Well, really, if you boil it down, it's about 300 million if you look at those. So like you that are active on, on Google Plus. And it's almost become more of sort of the techie Google because of the way that it integrates in. So I still think today, if you want to see cute pictures of your neighbor's puppies, that's Facebook. And in most circumstances, people are doing it on Google Plus as well. But I haven't put cute puppies on Google Plus. I have them on Facebook. But that's personal. Um, so, it's now morphed. They've lost some people. They lost key people that were brought on to the Google team to, to really push it out there. Uh, so what they've done is they've now said, you know what? We've got this social platform, which is Google Plus, right? And if you can pull up our Google Plus page. Uh, so I'll show you international students. But they've got really a social platform that's a part of it. But what it does is it ties in, like I said, with the Google Hangouts. It ties in with your calendar. <coughs> Here's an example of that. I signed up. I said, yes, I was going to attend this session, this Google Hangout, and I got a reminder. I didn't put it on my calendar. Google put it on my Google Calendar. Right? It's integrated with Maps. It's integrated in with their search. It's integrated in with YouTube, which they now own as well. So I'm not going to do anything after this session. It's just going to magically Googly appear on YouTube um, after this session once we hit the end button. Um, so it's, it's pretty neat. So Google Plus from a social perspective, this is our international student Google Plus page. So right now we're having a travel video contest that actually we announced the winner of during international week. So that's kind of our highlight and what we're kind of featuring right now. So we change this from time to time depending on what we do. Um, but we do a lot, a lot of different things. Like here's a live hangout that we're doing on Friday, tomorrow on tips to have your F1 visa approved. So that's one of the ways that we use it, to communicate with our audience, not from a perspective of, of selling anything or just giving students good content, but somebody's gonna watch that, they're gonna like it, they're gonna share it, it's a good, engaging content that will live on forever. They might bump into this a month down the road on YouTube, or a year down the road on YouTube. Um, just, you know, talking to folks, happy world food that you know that even existed. Um, and you can comment. So you can comment just like you can on Facebook. You can like it. According to Google, that's a, a plus one uh, on there um, as well. So we use this again to really engage just like we would on Facebook. We're marketing our travel video contest on Facebook too. It's a great contest. The winner walks away with $4,000. Uh, it grows every single year. Hundreds of videos that, that come in. We'll market on Facebook, we'll market on Twitter, we'll market it via email, all our normal channels, but we're also going to market it uh, through here. Here we partner with College Week Live. I'm sure a lot of people in the room that College Week Live is uh, we're marketing their Latin America Day as an example. So lots of different uses and lots of different ways. But I think one of the cool things about Google Plus is you know how Facebook, when maybe I know my boss is watching, but you don't want your boss to necessarily see a Facebook post, and you have to kind of go back and figure out how to exclude them. And then you, if you want to include them in something, you have to go back and put them back into that. With the Google, with Google Plus, you don't have to do that. You can create circles, and essentially, what a circle is is kind of a category or almost a tag for certain ways that you can talk to certain audiences. So, as an example, I have a coworker circle on my own personal. Google Plus page. I have a friend, I have a family. Um, and so we do the same thing with our Google Plus page. Uh, so we have a bunch that we're following. Here's Envisage International, and if you click on that, that's everybody that works for us. So, as an example, when we were doing a test for a Hangout, 
we invited all of Invisage International to join our test. And so they could see exactly how we were working it. We did a hangout with Hiram College. Um, so we had about 337 folks there now. Once we did it, we created a circle. So we were talking about the benefits of studying at Hiram College, which is in Ohio, and all the benefits of studying there, the programs they offer, maybe what scholarships they offer, and then we put them all in a circle. So now we can communicate with them. So when Hiram College says, you know what, our application deadline is in two weeks, we can push them a message. It's only going to go to the folks at Hiram College because it's only relevant to them. So we created relevant content. Now we can continue to communicate with Hiram College and communicate with relevant content. So when I look around this room, I look at everybody who's in here, if you guys have circles for different things, such as, okay, well, we know that these folks have applied, but they haven't enrolled. Well, there's a circle. Or I know these people have expressed interest, but they haven't applied. There's another circle. I know that these folks are coming to campus in 30 days. We need to get them a 30-day checklist on what to do. So we've got them in a circle, or two weeks. Or maybe they're on campus, and you just want to communicate with your international students about the celebrations that you're doing on International Students Day, uh, or whatever it might be. So I think Google has really nailed the circles. They've done a great job uh, being able to put those together and have a way that you can communicate with specific people without having to come in and admit people, um, those types of things. Or we could just put a post right on here, and it would go out to everybody. And we chose to do that. Yes? Can you like in the way you were talking about the student Pipeline, can you move them out of the circle? Sure, yeah. So we will create a circle for this hangout today once this is done. And it's real easy. You see everybody that's in it, and you can just add them to a circle, right? So, just, Jenny's just created a circle. So and now you can move them into it. Yeah, so now you can say test. It's be in the test circle, right? Sorry. Um, so we did one, we're going to talk a little bit about Mississippi State in a little bit. We'll come out to Mississippi State. We did a, a hangout for the State University of New York up in Brock Court. So we now have different ways that we can communicate to those different segments of our list. So we've been using um, Google Plus a little bit over a year now and have really started to kind of ramp up our efforts because we see what a valuable tool it is. You can have a person in all these rooms. Yes, correct. Yeah. Exactly. So then the other piece to Google Plus is the Hangouts. And that's what we're going to spend a good chunk of time talking about will be um, the different Hangouts um, and how, how to use those. Does anybody have questions before we kind of get into the Hangouts? So Google Hangouts is essentially a way to communicate with students like you would through WebEx, or like you would through GoToMeeting, or like you would through Skype, right? But you do a webinar or a WebEx, yes, there's a recording you know, component to it. But once you do that WebEx, it's over. It's ended. You've gotten your information, you've given it to the 100 students that were on that WebEx, or, or whatever it might be, the 10 students, depending on your, your audience. But then it kind of ends. So. A hangout is a little bit different than that because you can invite as many students as you want to the hangout. You just need to know what your message is, what your marketing is, and who you kind of want to, 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 to contact, right? So the, the great thing about the hangout is you can continue to market it and you can, it'll also live live through YouTube, through the different places um, that we put it. So it's just like, like doing a Skype, right? Or, or doing, doing one of the other Hangouts. So kind of some of the ways that we have used the Hangouts, and Jenny, I'm going to kind of turn this over to you to drive around and show them some of the ways that we've used it. We showed you the Hangout that we have coming up on Friday, but just some of the ways that some of our other businesses use the Hangouts as well. Okay, so if you are interested in doing a Google Hangout, um, I can show you real quick. I mean, they've made it really easy to use. So when you have your Google Hangout, or your Google Plus page rather, you can go up here, um, create a Hangout, and then from here you just start a Hangout. So you just click on it, 
you give it a name you want it especially if you're dealing with students you want to make it student friendly right you want to make it engaging you want to think about the title of it um, and then you can also so we'll call it home of the chimichangas for location purposes <laughs> and then we have the description so again you want to keep it just you want to make it short you want to have it speak to what you're presenting on again you want it to be very descriptive and then also consider the fact that it's going to be searchable so whatever your description is going to be think about how you want students to find it so we'll just put test and then you can either start it right away or you can start it later so you can pick your date, set up the time, and then what's really neat is that once you categorize people, you can do a specific audience target here. So you can keep it public, which means anyone in the world can join, or you can actually just pick one of your circles that you've already set up. So from a school, you can have an admissions um, circle, and you can have them at different parts of the application process. So you could use it as an orientation tool, for example, or you could do it as a pre-departure tool, as another example. And if you have them in different circles, it really allows you to specialize the message, because what we've found is that students are much more engaged if you're speaking directly to them. And the more targeted you make it, the more you're gonna get them to engage. So you can use those circles to kind of help you, especially if you're from a bigger school where you don't have necessarily that one-on-one -on -one connection all the time, to really speak to those students directly. And so then from there, you could just share it, and then it would go out to that group of people. So um, that's, that's just one example of, of how to use it. Um, once you set it up, then you'll be able to see the description. People will be able to RSVP. You'll be able to see who's responded who hasn't responded um, and then again you can start it when you'd like and then the important thing is that there's also question and answers so once you've set up your Google hangout you want to turn your question and answers on and that allows students to directly engage with you and ask questions even before you start the hangout so that means before you even start it you can get your questions you can kind of gauge where your students are in that process before it even starts and Don, I'll, I'll turn that back to you. Or would you like me to talk about the process yeah, let's talk after about, that? Uh, let's talk a little bit about how we use it, um, some of the Hangouts we've done. So maybe show our Google Plus Hangout page on International Student. OK. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Like, what can you stay in? How do you fix it? Yeah, like you get the wrong group invited, or can you take it off? Do some yeah, the, the one, once you've started a Hangout, you're locked in. Like if we ended this Hangout or hit the wrong button and it ended, then it's done. Um, so you, you have to be kind of careful when you're, when you're setting them up because it can cause some problems. And to add to that, though, once you do have it set up, if it hasn't actually started, you can edit the Hangout. So, for example, I have the screen shown here, and for all the remote individuals, you can see it now, too. If you're on the page, you can click edit events. So then here you can change the actual title of it, the description of it, you can change the date, the time, um, and so that way you can make any modifications you want to it. You can even change the theme of the color, um, so it gives you some extra customization to it. Um, and then let's say you wanna share it with more people, you can just go over here to share events, and that'll expand out your circles, that'll expand out your reach um, into different, to different people. So that, that's one way that you can integrate it. Um, and then once you actually have that Google Hangout, let's say you go and you broadcast it, then after that, as Don mentioned, you have a lot of opportunity to share that video. Um, so what we so first of all, um, here is our YouTube page. So it goes directly to that YouTube page. So you can see some of the ones that we've done here. So we have choosing a US school, we've got direct picking your major, again, thinking about students, trying to make it fun, trying to make it inter, um, interactive. You click on that, and you can see 86 people have viewed that. Hi, all. This is Brian. And you're able to also have this live on YouTube. So one thing I do want to point out is on YouTube, once you've done your Google Hangout, you want to think about your description not only in the Google Hangout, but also on YouTube, because it goes directly to YouTube. So here we have a description of what it was, 
And then we also want to put a link. So wherever you want your students to go, you can also put links so that you're directing the students to wherever it is that they should go. And you can just, you'll get a URL. If I just copy this URL here, then I can put it anywhere. So if you look at our page on internationalstudent.com, for example, um, if you look at our blog, we'll use that as an example. You can see that we have it in our blogs. So you can paste that link in Facebook and it automatically recognizes it and brings up the video. Um, the other example to that is we did one on taxes. So we have content about taxes, but again, how many of you have students that actually read all the material that you send, especially on taxes, which is such a dense topic? Yeah, a lot of people shaking their head no. <laughs> um, so here you can just click on the video, bring it up, and it's the exact same video that you did at the Hangout. So there's a lot of different ways that you can take the video once you've done it and integrate it into what you do every day. Perfect. Um, questions? Yes. Can I use Safari or Firefox? No, you can use other browsers as well. Yeah. They're all compatible. Right. I just I picked this one because it has my login saved on it, so it's it's easier. What other questions? Anybody else before we move along? So what I want to talk about now is what we did with Mississippi State. So for full disclosure, Mississippi State is a client of ours. Um, they're what we call a featured school partner of ours. So what we've done is we have created on our site, on internationalstudent.com, we've created a microsite for them. So this is an example of what they looks like, what it looks like. So we have taken some of the content that they've produced, we've put some content that we've produced. So we have videos, we have photos, we have program descriptions really all the information that a student would want to get if they were interested in studying Mississippi. And if somebody goes through this and they say, you know what, Mississippi State's a good fit for me, they can fill out that form, and that will go right over to Karen Lee, who's the Director of International Admissions, and then she can disperse it amongst whoever is going to, to follow up with their email or phone call, get them into their kind of enrollment management system um, to, to contact. And we do some other things for them with, with some email marketing, we do a lot with Facebook and Twitter and those types of things. So we were talking to them, and they said, you know what, we would love to get kind of a boost in the folks that were filling this form out and that you're sending over to us. We'd like to get kind of a nice little number of inquiries sent over to us. And so we've been doing, we've done some Google Hangouts. And we said, what about a Google Hangout? And Karen said, that's great, but I don't really have time to do a hangout, I don't have time to do the marketing, and we don't have a Google Plus page at the university that we have access to, and uh, they have one for the university, but it's, it has maybe 1,200 people that kind of plus it and, and those types of things. So we said, well, you know what, we can, we've got a Google Plus page. So what we decided to do is we hosted a Google Plus hangout on our site, on internationalstudent.com, and we gave it a home. And if you can pull up the home, for it. So once we gave it a home, we created the event, just like Jenny showed you how to create, we gave it a nice little background look and feel. Now students can go and actually say they're going to attend it, so they can RSVP for the event. And so here's the event, and clearly it's after the fact. We've already did the, we did this back on September 23rd. And so now we have a page where students can come and they can start commenting, they can go ahead and ask some questions, they can pre ask questions. Um, you can see it for the viewers, 289 watched with a bunch of maybes. So all of these people are now kind of caught up in that Google marketing web. And so now they're going to get reminders before the event. Um, we can put them into circles um, as well. So now we've got a marketing arm. So what we did is we, what I call kind of our marketing period. So it was on the 23rd to about the 21st, maybe late in the day on the 20th, we sent out an email. So I said, hey, Mississippi State is hosting a hangout. Join the hangout, and it's going to be Karen Lee, and um, her name was Nadita, who was an Indian student. So they invited an Indian student to join them. And you can ask questions. You'll learn about Mississippi State. And then at the end, if you're interested, you can contact them directly through the form that we showed you. So we did that marketing. And then we also did, we kind of combined the social media stream. We did some Facebook marketing. Uh, we did some... Um, Twitter marketing, lots of social, so the email the social, we marketed it on our site to get people to attend. So we we're hoping to get about 200 or to do about 300 people to attend the event, knowing what that would trickle down to um, in the, until the inquiries. 
So we sent them actually a computer, um, a laptop computer, like a Chromebook that was loaded with our international student Google Plus credentials on it. We sent them a camera, just like the camera that we're using for this Hangout that has a great little mic on it that's able to pick up. Um, and so all they had to do was log in and we said, you said you didn't have much time, you have time to do a 45 minute or so presentation. So that was their job was to do the 45 minute presentation. So we did all the marketing, we did the, kind of the technical, we made sure everything was troubleshot. And so then they did the day of the event came. So we sent another email reminding people to attend. We did some more social media marketing, did some marketing through our Google Plus page. And so it lasted, it ended up lasting about 55 minutes because of a lot of the questions that were asked. And you can see, I mean, we were still getting questions. Scroll down just a little bit. I mean, these are people that are still engaging. This was yesterday. This person's going to watch it. I'm going to watch the video of it now. Um, here's somebody who's looking for a scholarship, and if they get it, then God's going to bless us all. Um, somebody that wants to study a master's degree, which, you know, Mississippi um, State is well known for their master's uh, programs as well, especially on the engineering side. So I'll show you a video, it's about five minutes, of just that we kind of have segmented and showed some of the kind of cool things that Mississippi State talked about. Hi everybody, and thank you for joining us today for our International Student Hangout Series, where we bring international students together with quality U.S. colleges and universities to promote higher education. Today we're going to be joined by Karen Lee, the Director of International Relations at Mississippi State University. We'll also be joined by Nandita Gupta, an international student at Mississippi State University from India. Karen will be introducing Mississippi State University, and Nandita will tell you a little bit more about her experience there and why it's a great place for international students. Well, hello, everyone. From um, my name is Karen Lee, and I'm really excited to talk to you a little bit about Mississippi State University. But really, before I do that, I really want to introduce Nandita Gupta. He's one of our uh, international students, and he will be joining us today. Nandita, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Um, I'm, I'm like um, Victoria said earlier that I'm from India. I'm from a town called Pune in Maharashtra and I'm studying electrical engineering at State. Whoa, electrical engineering. <laughs> I know a little bit about Mississippi first because you know what, Mississippi is much more than a river. The first thing I learned about Mississippi was, yep, it's a river, but yeah, yeah, there's so much water. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a state too, right? It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but seriously, um, Mississippi offers so much. Did you guys know that some of the most famous writers are from Mississippi? For example, who do we have? We've got John Bush, and um, he, was a, he was a really famous entrepreneur from Mississippi State, and they have an entire big room that we That's right, in the library. I forgot about yeah. that. It's called the John Bush and Room. <laughs> but what's important to you is we offer some of the majors that are important to you. We have over 80 of them. And the one thing that I really want you to take away from this um, Google Hangout is that Mississippi State offers you the exact same scholarship opportunities as we do to our American students. So if you have a decent at least 3.0 GPA and you do pretty good in the SAT or ACT, you have a really good chance to get a reduced rate to come to Mississippi State to study and that's a great thing. Sure. Uh, this is during the Holi celebration last year, mm -hmm. so a lot, of, a lot of my friends who will be watching this hang out. But what's Holi? Holi is the festival of colors <coughs> that comes around March. And what um, country is that from? Uh, it's from India. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of fun. Like we have a lot, of, we got, we got permission to play with colors, mm -hmm. and so it was just, it was a dry Holi. So no mixing the colors with water because it would make a lot. Of really huge international population and 
when you can think of a lot of international students, that means a lot of culture, a lot of awesome food, a lot of interaction. Food is great. Food is great. So this, I think, was taken at the Nepali night, organized by the Nepali Student Association. International Festa, yeah. every spring we have a huge festival right here on campus. And this is, I think, when all of the international student association kind of showcase everything. Yeah. And I think you can basically eat your way from one end of the world to the other. It's <laughs> really amazing. And I think a lot of them even hand out to food. So that's it's, right. It's it's a way for you to learn more about, you know, your culture and even others. Mm -hmm. This I think was at the Iranian night. I think yeah, yeah. we're looking at a picture of the Iranian New Year. So you're not, even though you're not from here, this place has become a home for you. So like I call it my home away from home. So it's, you know, when, when anyone asks me, like if I have visited other states in the country and I go there talk to different people and they ask me, hey, where are you from? And it's so instinctive that you say, oh, I'm, I'm from Mississippi. And yeah, actually I am from India, but <laughs> even though I'm, this is, this is like home for me now. <laughs> and a lot of international students feel the same way. Like, I think this guy right here is dressed. Yeah, that's Yago. Well, we're ready to answer some questions These now. Questions so, were submitted by the folks who if you want to submit your questions, <laughs> we're ready for you. There you go. What is the minimum TOEFL score for oh, undergraduate? Hi, I'm a student from Morocco, and I'm wondering if there are any art classes in our college. Oh, yeah. Well, we do have my best friend is majoring in art. Now, we're going to go move on to the next question. This is from uh, Kush, and he wants to know the GMAT is required, or she, I'm sorry, required as <coughs> mentioned on your website, but is it compulsory? Well, actually, you know, required means compulsory, so yes. If it says that you have to have a GMAT, then you have to have a GMAT. So I hope we helped, and please contact Karen with any more questions that you have. She's really good with emails, like I usually get on reply within 24 hours, unless she's super busy with something else. But she'll definitely get back to you all, and I would suggest my definitely contact her. And also, please fill out that form. Make sure you fill out the form so that we can um, answer the questions that we did not get to answer right now. So please go. So I, I think that's a little long, but I think it's a, a great video because it really shows all the different things they talked about. They talked about, you know, uh, Mandita and her experiences at Mississippi State. They talk about kind of what they do for different international celebrations. We talked about the scholarships they offered, and then they were able to address the questions. And so now the hangout is done. Um, as you see, we what she was asking them to do is go to this page here to fill out that form, and then that information is instantly sent over to them. So then they'll respond within the 24 hours. Um, so the hangout's done. They addressed all the questions that were on. It lasted about 55 minutes. So now what? Well, just as this one is going to be, it's now zipped right over to YouTube, right? So now this hangout lives on forever. So if you type international students at Mississippi State University and you do a video search on regular Google search, this is going to come up above the poll. If you search it on YouTube, I think it's the number one. It was at, at, at one point anyway. Um, so now it's it's able to be found. They can take this video and they can use it to share. They can use it really all over. So the hope is that we created compelling, engaging content that students are going to interact with. They're going to take something away from it, and they might share it with a friend or two. So we, we did the Hangout, and it lives on. And so now we've also put it in some other places. It lives on our Google Hangout page on International Student. It lives on their profile right over here. So we now have a new box for the content where students can watch it. Um, and if you go back to YouTube, you can actually see this has been viewed since the live event back on September 23rd, 233 times. It's already been viewed. So it's content engaging. It's clearly engaging content if it's been viewed 233 times. So what were some of the other results? Um, is we ended up delivering 70, 70 of the students 
actually fill that form out within that small little window and went over to Mississippi State. So now they have 70 live, warm inquiries that are they're able to start working, seeing what their level of interest is, gauging whether they're even qualified to go to Mississippi State University, and get them into that enrollment funnel. They also had 1,600 views of that profile page that we showed you. So 1,600 students, of those 1,670 of them actually went through it, so please contact me. How do we, we don't know how many of these 233 at Fox YouTube have contacted them. Really the, the hard number that we can directly trace back is that 70 inquiries and that 1,600 views of that page. That's about a month's worth of profile views from Mississippi State where they probably average on, a, average on a month, maybe a little bit more, maybe 40 days. Um, so pretty successful event that we, we did with Mississippi State. Um, does anybody have questions about this question, uh, giving the video, uh, the video picture is being shown. Mm -hmm. uh, so how is that being done? Uh, is it they're sharing their screen? Yeah. What, what is that? So just as Jenny is driving this presentation here, we wanted to take a lot of the work off of Mississippi State, off of their shoulders. So we had Victoria, who you saw in the beginning of the video, she was standing in front of the camera. What you didn't see is you didn't see our tech person that was driving all the different slides, switching from Neptune Beach to okay. Mississippi State. So they just took it over. And right, so they took it over. So we had obviously practiced with them. We knew what slides to put up when, and so that they had earbuds in, so we could actually communicate with them, um, feed them the questions, um, those types of things. And it's one of the reasons that we would kind of set this up the way we did today. And one of the things when we get to best practices we'll talk about, there is, it's, it's not a poke a button, turn it on, and start talking. You've got to have, you've got to practice it. You've got to have a support team in place. In fact, our support team is back at our home office that's watching this. And fortunately, neither one of our phones went off. That means that it's still going okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. so. And then to add to that, too, I'll, I'll just show you what I'm looking at um, from the back end. So this is the video of Dawn. Right, and um, it, it's a little blurry, Don, right now, just because of the way that it's coming through. Um, but here are all the functionalities. Um, so, for example, I can share a screen. So, if I want to show the people at home the screen that we're looking at, although that's an infinite screen, mm -hmm. you can do that. Um, let me stop that screen share. Um, the other thing that you can, and so, for example, if you have a PowerPoint presentation, you would just simply go here, click the screen share. And then that way you can pick which screen you want to visualize. Right, and you could do it by yourself. Right. right. We just choose to we have. We just had a team. That was we, we have a team. Let me oh, get here a little bit. Yeah. Uh, can you improve the quality of the video? That's kind of my question of Bruce Lee. Would it be the, the synchronization of the, the voice and yeah, the we, audio and video? You can. You can definitely increase that quality. Um, so. It can be increased by the, the camera. We've recently switched to this camera. This is a great HD quality camera. For that um, hangout, we had a different microphone. For our very first hangout, we had headsets. We sent them a headset. And then when they went in between the, uh, the Hiram, and when they went in between, they were passing the thing back and forth. And that was a learning thing. Don't give them a headset. right? So yes, with, with these types of cameras, these are pretty inexpensive um, cameras that do a great job. Yes, sir. Well, we're doing a pilot on the Hangout right now. What we like about Hangout is the document sharing. So, uh, one, for proper reasons, we want to make sure we're talking to the student. We can have them show us their ID. We're here to verify they are who we're talking to and then go into more specifics. But they can also then show us their portal and they can log into what we call our My Key Network Community College here in Tucson. They can log into their portal, and if they're having trouble, we can help them navigate through their own page as if they were right here with us. So we go in and say, okay, we'll go here, click on that link, and go through, and so as if we're right there with them, and we can help them get through. So that's what we like about the people here. That's great. It's great. Use. Great. great use. The hard part is a lot of people just don't have the, they haven't used Google Hangout, mm -hmm. and so they're, they're you know, we, we would we know a lot more people have Skype accounts, but uh, we're hoping to tie this Google Hangout into our portal so that they would actually 
because we're using Google, we're giving students uh, Gmail accounts at Pima as part of the portal. And what we'd like eventually is where they can go in and log into the portal. And by logging in, then we know who they are just through their login. That they couldn't, someone else couldn't come in there. Because of course, the concern is you have a video camera, you might have a non student come in and do something really rude with one of your advisors, and you don't want to. You don't want to go there, so that's what we don't like about stuff. Right. And this is, you know, you gotta you gotta look at your different ways that you're communicating. Don't stop using Skype if that's the way your students are communicating. But this is gonna get you a segment that's going to be a little bit of a different segment that might be communicating um, this way. So I think you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Just as when we're doing the we're marketing our Google Hangouts via Facebook and via Twitter. Uh, we still do uh, video whiteboards where there's not any sort of live audience. Uh, you know, I mean, the unique thing about this is when we're doing a Google Hangout, we don't have a live audience. We have we're talking to the camera typically. Yes. Do you find that there's any places where around the world that students can? China, Vietnam. China. So yeah. that. That's still on the site. So let me um, also, I mean, like the countries where we had that attended this, I've got the top 10 list. David Letterman. Um, so the US, most of the students that attended that hangout were from the US. Makes perfect sense. Those aren't kids at the University of Missouri or domestic kids. They might be at the university, but those are international kids that are in the US. Um, second was India. Makes place. They've got a great brand in India. And they're known for their graduate studies. Um, Egypt, which is pretty interesting, Bangladesh, Malaysia, Turkey, Spain, Colombia, Kyrgyzstan, and Germany. So, which is interesting because Karen is from Germany. So that was kind of the top ten list. So a pretty unique group of, uh, of countries that, that attended. Yes. In order for students to join the hangout, I'm assuming they have to have a Google account. They have to have a Google account. Okay, so then that's sort of a, on our end, we just have to right. just tell them to set it up in order to get the message that we're trying to get. Right, typically, I mean, you have a student, if you're email marketing, then they might not, but if you're marketing it, especially via Google Plus, I mean, clearly that's a good target. And then all those people that are in your circle that, that you can continue to, to communicate with. So, as an example, after the Mississippi State Hangout, all the people in the circle, we send them a message. Saying thank you for joining, make sure they had Karen's contact information. We're able to market it to them. So some of the things that we have kind of learned along the way, um, one of them is if you're doing kind of global and we read you that country list, you've got to be very conscious of the time zones. So we did one at two o'clock in the afternoon. Notice Australia wasn't one of the probably top 25 countries because it's after they it's past their bedtime. Uh, we've done them at 9 in the morning, we've done them at 10 in the morning, 11 in the morning, 2 in the afternoon. So you really just need to kind of figure out kind of the best possible time depending on who your audience is. You don't want to do them too early because they can not be waking up yet. Um, so that's one of the things that we've really experienced uh, and kind of have some experience with you know, just through some of our email communications as well. Um, the technical setup is, you know, just make sure you check everything. Like I said, we've done them where we started them, um, and we have a studio, and one of our tech guys is beating on the window saying, no mic, no mic, right? So just some of the things that, that you learn. We've learned about the headsets. That was one of the things we learned. You know, have equipment that is great. Like I thought, um, I even said it earlier, they should have a radio show, Karen Lee, um, because, it, I mean, that, they just had a good back and forth banter. We were missing that in Hiram hangout because they had a headset, so they just passed it back and forth. There was no back and forth, so it wasn't quite as exciting and, and jazzy. Um, staffing, you can do it on your own, but I recommend at least until you're really comfortable having a support staff um, in place. You know, Jenny should really be up here talking because she's giving three presentations today as opposed to me, but she's kind of, kind of driving the, the technical aspect of this. The other thing is camera angle. If you're not using something like this, like we stole the trash can from the corner last night and hit it under the table so you can have it. Um, but the, the, a lot of times when you're using these, you're looking up your nose. As an example, nobody wants to see that part of you, uh, at least that I know of. 
Um, and another thing, and we just learned this this morning as we were doing a rehearsal with our tech folks, is shut all your other stuff off. You know, I have a Dropbox account that syncs with the company. I've got Skype that, you know, takes up bandwidth. So we're at the mercy of this hotel and the conference internet, which was one of the real challenges and one of the things where I think the exact words my boss used is you're crazy to try this, to pull it off at a conference with the, the hotel wireless. So make sure your internet's connected. Uh, make sure all those things work as well. What else? Who has questions? Um, I have a question about how to articulate. Like, so your organization set up a separate Google account that everyone can use, but then you guys also personally have your Google Plus accounts that you engage with um, online. Do you see sort of where my question is? Like, what did you decide as an organization? Yeah, that's a great question. How do you Set up at Google. I, th I think I know what you're, where you're going. So we have, as a company, we have sort of different social media, what I kind of consider presence. Mm -hmm. So um, as an example, we have an international student insurance Facebook page. We have an international student Facebook page. We have an Envisage International Facebook page. And it's really for our different audiences. Um, same with Google+. Plus. So we have an international student um, Google Plus page which is more of our complete student facing. This Hangout is being run through our Envisage corporate because our Envisage corporate site is more geared towards educators um, and folks that are interested in the higher ed as opposed to the students. Okay, so I see that you, you I mean, you have like international student at gmail.com, right? Is that what you have to have to have a uh, uh, Google Plus? Presence is that Gmail address? Yes. Yes. We kind of link it all together. Yeah. Um, but you can set up a page, and that way it would, and you can customize it, and you can choose who you want to manage it. Okay. So um, if you've got colleagues in the office that you want to give them access to, you can choose who you want to kind of run it, and you can give them managerial and different levels of access to it. And this is our international student loan page, for example. Um, we've done a, a quite a number of videos. Um, and then there's the IS. And here's the Envisage. So you can create as many pages technically as you want, which is really good, especially because I think a lot of schools probably have a Google Plus page for the whole university, but maybe not for the international department. So you can create your own Google Plus page for study abroad or for international students. Um, and then that way you can kind of engage with them in that way. I kind of look at Google Plus as where Facebook for universities was maybe four years ago. I don't know if anybody remembers Learn Hub, but they traveled across the country talking about Facebook and how to integrate it in with your university and getting your own international uh, Facebook page. Uh, Google Plus is really going to be kind of the same way because if you want to host Hangouts and you want to keep them there, you want to have control, you want to be that manager. Uh, it's it's going to be hard for you to get to be a manager of your entire school's Facebook page. And one of the things that I really liked about uh, the Mississippi State video is that it was so focused just on international. If you're a domestic kid, you hung up after two minutes. You know, it's all it was all international, and that, that's what I like about the circles and the way you can use this is really hone in on it. So we'll invite a lot of students that on a financial aid one, we might have 100 students out of 15,000 that we invited. But those 100 students are the ones that are interested in financial aid. Those 100 students are the ones that have access to Google. We might do, we might send the video out via email to those that didn't get to see it because they don't have a Google account, those types of things. Yes, Jim. We have a question from the audience, right. the other audience. Um, can individuals in any country attend a Hangout? Can any individuals in any country attend a hangout? Yes, provided they've got access to Google. And as I mentioned earlier, other than China and Vietnam, those are the two that they've kind of shut it down. As China has, we're all aware, China has kind of a cake plate over their internet in general. I'm sorry. I'm just VPN. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. 
which we, we have an employee in China. So we, we know it, so we can do what we can. So goes through. The other important thing to keep in mind as well is that there's a delay on the Google Hangouts. So there's like a 45 second or so delay when you're doing it. So always keep that in mind too, especially if you've got someone else remote um, that's kind of managing it, that whatever's happening, there's going to be a delay um, that right. goes between the different. Right, so the folks in our office will see this in 40 seconds. It's, it's kind of like the WebEx used to be. WebEx used to have a delay um, as well. I think they've tightened it up a little bit. And Google, you know, one of the really important things to, to note on Google and the Hangouts is Google Plus's lifespan is so short. Google is constantly making changes to it. There, um, as an example, you can pull a video from your Google Docs right into a, to a Hangout. You couldn't have done that several weeks ago. There's just there's all these little changes and all this other integration that they're constantly doing. So the instructions on how we showed you to do a sign up for Google Hangout can change. So that's something also to, to kind of keep in mind as they tweak it and they make it better and as they perfect it as well. Yes? I just want to address your question about, so you know, all you need is an email account. And so when we were piloting, we created Gmail accounts for each of our advisors. Because we didn't want them to have to use their personal Google Plus account, we would want the students to have that email on their personal one. So each one had one that uh, has a unique one, and we can contact them directly. And we test it periodically, just going in and contacting. And so um, Sandra here is on our team, and, and I can go ahead and send her a Google directly under her email Google Plus account. And then eventually we'll have an international. Google Plus Council, anybody can monitor that as we start to get more traffic. And it's free. I mean, you yeah. can sign up for a Google email. Yeah. And it's all integrated too. So, if let's say you schedule one, it's going to RSVP to automatically go into their Google Calendar. So, everything's kind of integrated. So, the more it's kind of one of those things you kind of buy into it, and then you have all the extra features that come with it and reminding students and stuff like that. Once I log in, it's when I go to log in on my work computer, I have three Google Plus, and it often confuses yeah. me which one I want. And it can be a little frustrating to know I don't want that one, but that's the one you recognize. And that's the last one I'm logged into, and I want you to go there and get another one. Right. This is where I need to go. So, right, and we came very close to showing my personal Google circles in this presentation. And <laughs> that exact same picture that you're talking about. So this page, you have multiple people who manage this page, let's say. Like, it's like a Facebook page where you have, you, you can assign mm -hmm. people, okay. Right. So as opposed to being associated directly with an individual. Yeah, you assign, you can assign um, multiple people to manage it, to edit it, and give them different access points to it as well. Um, they can post videos, and then other people can go onto your wall, just like you would with Facebook, and you can put, you know, you can, put different posts on here depending on what your settings are. So you could share videos and the videos show up, you could show pictures, you could do text, you can do links and all of that um, is there. And then they also have another component where you can kind of measure the success of it as well. That's a recent feature of the Google Hangouts and the Google Plus accounts. So now there's a whole component where you can, where you can kind of judge how effective it is. The other thing that I, I like to point out is that when you're doing the Google Hangout, students can ask questions. And um, as they ask questions, you can tag it in the presentation. So let's say you're doing an orientation and you're getting multiple questions from students. You have the option to mark it. And then that way when students are, let's say they just want one question, they can go back, review the presentation, and know exactly that question that they asked. So that kind of gives it some extra functionality that like, let's say a Skype wouldn't have, um, which makes Google Plus really unique in that sense. What else? Anybody else have questions? Um, is there, what do you read or follow in order to keep up with the changes that are happening with Google Plus? Is there a resource that you They have their blogs that are out there. Yeah, yeah we, um, to be honest with you, we've got a tech team that right. is <laughs> on top of a lot of those things, but yeah, the different blogs that Google has is a good way to keep up with it. Like I said, it's a moving target right now. Yeah. And every time you log in, there's new functions to it. So they're always making adjustments. I'm sure you realize that as you go in. 
So once you think you've got it under control, <laughs> they tweak it a little bit to keep you on your toes. Right. <laughs> yes, the privacy sometimes is a concern. Are the students who are joining you hanging out? Can they see the other students who are involved with it, or they have to sort of talk to each other, or is it basically to the presenter? And the presenter is the one who knows who's involved. We can see it. That's a good question. Do you know the answer to that, Jenny? Yeah, you can. You can because there's a section on the Hangout where you can see everyone else who's RSVP regardless. So, for example, here's today's Hangout. If I go down to the bottom, you can see who's watching it. So, if there's other students, multiple students, and then they'll be able to see one another. Um, the other thing too is that there's the questions, and the questions can be seen by everybody as well, and it's linked to the account. So in terms of anonymity, it doesn't. It wants you to be more engaged and to connect more than wants privacy. I would so say. So if they write something inappropriate, are you able as the yes. administrator to delete that? Yes. yes. Okay. We delete. I mean, we've had questions that we deleted now. Okay. Maybe it's during the live hangout. Yep. Anything else? Well, cool. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it.